Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about one dinosaur specifically. There's one Tyrannosaur in the Jurassic Park universe that managed to do a lot of cool stuff while flying under pretty much every casual fan's radar. This dinosaur was the main antagonist of the Return to Jurassic Park storyline that came out in the mid-90s, and its dedication to constantly stalk our main characters on Nublar made for one hell of an awesome JP story in my opinion. While nowhere near as famous as any of the other Rexes in the franchise, I honestly think this dinosaur is criminally underrated. Roaming the jungles of Isla Nublar before Spielberg's official follow-up, and even Michael Crichton's sequel novel, this is everything we currently know about the one-eyed T-Rex. The origins of this individual T-Rex are identical to pretty much all of InGen's clones at the time. However, in this continuity, it's actually suggested that Nublar may have more than just one Tyrannosaur. This information can be gathered from Muldoon noting that when it comes back to stalk Grant and the others, that it would appear to be the same T-Rex that they stumbled upon earlier. Now, in the Return to Jurassic Park arc, Alan, Ellie, a surviving Robert Muldoon, and InGen assassin Edgar Prather have been sent back to Isla Nublar by John Hammond in in order to figure out what was happening to his island. The United States military was supposed to have rounded up all of the dinosaurs three days after the incident of 1993, as we can see in the first issue of the Raptor comic arc, where they successfully capture the T-Rex from the first movie. But the military's effectiveness is soon called into question when we first meet the infamous One-Eyed Rex. So. Apart from the dinosaur's obvious single eye, the look of this individual is just a little more individualistic than all of the rest. Instead of being drawn brown or green like most of InGen's clones, this tyrannosaur is notably red like its novel counterpart. In fact, it actually takes part in some scenes that were obviously directly lifted from Michael Crichton's novel. And while it doesn't technically kill any of our main protagonists, it does badly injure Sonya, and it's also implied to have killed a few members of the US Army during a late night escape from a military compound. Upon first appearance, this Tyrannosaur still has both of its eyes, and it chases after the engine team after they stumble upon it eating a fresh kill. It is during this first encounter with the individual where we're reminded that the animals can't see you if you don't move which is precisely how everyone is able to evade the Predator this early. Now, we wouldn't actually get to see this Tyrannosaur again until it returned in Issue 3, where it catches the engine team with paleontologist Raul Lopez and African guide Sonia Durant, who are both currently working for Biosyn. The small band of humans soon begin to fire their weapons at the T-Rex just before it grabs Sonya in its jaws. The Tyrannosaur's teeth quickly penetrate Durant's flesh without it even having to bite down. And just before it's able to kill the Biosyn agent, Alan Grant fires a perfect shot at the dinosaur's right eye. This causes the animal to roar out in extreme pain and drop Sonya in the process. The dinosaur would then retreat into the jungle soon after. But of course, this wouldn't be the Rex's final appearance in the story. Once the team of humans starts to raft their way down one of Nublar's rivers, the one-eyed Rex returns to stalk its prey. It begins to swim after the protagonist before capsizing their boats and nearly killing Robert Muldoon. But it's during the second attack where everyone is able to fire a frenzy of close quarter shots at the animal, which again, make it retreat and run away. After that, the one-eyed T-Rex would make its final appearance in the story during the fourth and final issue of the comic where it would deliberately search for Alan Grant while it was combing the area the group was staying in. Once spotted, Alan and Ellie would be chased up against a thick rock wall that sat along the edge of a steep cliff. Here the pair are able to confuse the T-Rex by remaining absolutely still so that the animal can't see them. However, the dedication to this dinosaur's hunt leads the animal to bite forward blindly, knowing that some way and somehow his prey had to be standing there invisible. Dr. Sattler can't take any more of this though, so she manages to grab a small boulder and throw it towards the dinosaur, hitting its leg in the process. This causes the one-eyed Rex to stand up in a full display now that it knows where its prey is located. But in doing so, the rocks that surround its feet begin to give way to the animal's weight, and it actually slips and falls off of the hill and down the steep cliff that the rock wall was on the edge of, giving Alan and Ellie the time they need to escape. 
The United States military, who are actually quite rogue agents in the story, get one last look at the one-eyed Rex while it roars defiantly in anger at its escaping prey. Now obviously, none of this is hard fact for the actual film canon. All of the events that are depicted with this individual can only be found in the original Return to Jurassic Park storyline that came out in the mid-90s. This would be in Topps Comics' pretty original canon universe that they created. Seeing one animal return issue after issue with a reason to be angry at our protagonist is one of the reasons that I really, really like this dinosaur. And the fact that it's got the Crichton coloration just adds to its awesomeness. A one-eyed Tyrannosaur that stalks the survivors of Nublar on a military-ridden island. I think it's really, really fun stuff. If you haven't checked out that story, I would highly recommend it if you're a fan of the franchise. In fact, I'd actually really like to talk about it more now that we're getting a new Jurassic World Evolution DLC of the same name. But hey, whatever your own thoughts and opinions are on this one-eyed T-Rex, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now as always, this video wouldn't be possible without the support of my awesome game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Their continued support has really been a lot of help to me when making this stuff, and I never want them to ever forget it. So a big thank you to each and every one of you for watching this video. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in seeing me again. I'll see you all in the next one guys, and as always, take it easy.